Hey folks, just a very quick mention. Today we're going to be using two plugins in particular and a theme. So to get these, if you don't know already, to go to the bottom left to your settings. For your appearance, you want to go to manage and type in the ITS theme and you'll be able to get that one there. And then additionally as well, we can go ahead and grab the community plugins. If you haven't got it enabled already, I highly recommend turning off the safety mode or the restriction mode. And then we can go to browse community plugins. And then what we want to do is look for the MetaBind plugin. Oh, I always forget the space, the MetaBind. And then we're also looking for the data view. This one doesn't have space, but if I die anyway, I um, want to pick up these three because we're going to be using those a lot today. So let's jump straight into it. So Obsidian is already an amazing program that we can use to organize our notes. We can use it to create settlements, organize our organizations, manage our NPCs, and with the brand new item template, manage our items as well. If you don't know what Obsidian is, highly recommend checking out towards the end of the video as well as the card on the top right of the screen now. However, if you already know what it is, I won't go any further because today we're going to learn about how to use taps. Now, have you ever gone ahead onto one of these wiki websites and thought, do you know what, I really want to show more than one picture uh, in the display in the info box we're using? It would be really nice to show different pieces of artwork that we use within the game. Well, luckily enough, there is actually something we can do with that. It's called the Obsidian Snippets and Demos tabs in Obsidian. Now, this comes from one of the users, Sailkite V. Uh, they do a lot of work within the tabletop RPG community for the Obsidian. And one of the amazing things they managed to whip up is essentially just what we're looking at, being able to pick between different options and swapping between them. And you can get your hands on this really, really easily. So I'll leave a link in the description below for you to get your hands on this. However, as you can see, super simple to set up. All you need to do is scroll down here and pick up this code. So I'll just click on this box here, which copies it. And then if we go ahead and go straight into our vault here, and I'm just going to make a new note here just for now and paste this in and then go into viewing mode. There is, that's all there really is to getting it in here straight away. Now, as you can see, there's probably a few differences, and that's because we haven't picked up one of the most important things. And if we scroll back up, we'll want to be looking for the CSS, basically the snippet that makes all of this work. So if you click on that link and go into tabs into uh, Obsidian CSS and come over to the right here where it says the download the raw file, you want to click on that. Now, what you can do from there is if you go to the bottom left for your settings and go to the appearance tab, you can scroll down until you find the CSS snippets. Click on the folder here, and what it'll do, it'll open up, oops, on the other screen here. All right, there we go. So now we've got that open, you'll be able to see the snippets folder. And as you can see, I've got mine in here already, but you just wanna chuck yours in. And then really, that's all it is to to get this thrown in there. So we can actually come back into Obsidian and do the last step of going into our settings, go back to our appearance, scroll down, and then you'll see tabbed in Obsidian, you may need to give it a quick refresh and then enable it. And then if we leave, you'll see this has changed. So now we've got these options, one, two, and three at the top. Got the div and then we got the A squared plus, got option two, B squared equals option three, E over M. Really simple, straightforward. Now, what we can do from this is doing multiple different things. We can input pictures in here straight away so, for example, if I was to come in here and do something like the placeholder image, if I come in here and do, let's say the, uh, we'll do the hub example PNG. And then lastly, we'll go ahead and do the mac and cheese, because that's on my mind <laughs> from the uh, pictures that we've got through here. And close that. So as you'll be able to see at the moment, I'm doing this deliberately, is we won't be able to see these images straight away simply because we're linking them. Whereas this one we can. Now, the reason why that's possible is because of this thing at the beginning here, an exclamation mark. Might be a little bit hard to see, but I'll try and zoom in best I can so I can show this off of the exclamation mark. So all we need to do is to come through here at the beginning of all of these and then go ahead and do that as well. 
options one, two, and three. So, perfect. Now we're getting somewhere. And just as a quick side mention as well, because I know some people like to know this when I mention it to them. If you was to do something like the exclamation mark and then call up, let's say, of the vault hub. So this is the note of our beginning part here of the vault hub. We can actually call the entire note by using stuff like this as well. So if you want a note within a note for whatever reason, you get all the same functionality and you can do it all in here. So something to bear in mind, really handy tool to know. However, as I was saying, now, we, now we're getting somewhere with the images. Let's take it one step further. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring in an example that I have from my personal vault to kind of show you some of the things you can do with it. Alrighty, so here we are in my own personal vault and you can see an NPC that I'm starting to develop here. So one nice thing that you can do is, for example, this is a hag. So they actually have a hag form and they also have a human form. So when they're trying to deceive someone, so it allows you to do stuff like this and to make it work within the actual template vault that we have here, we can actually link this in so we can start setting up the art pieces so we can select it. it does require a slight little bit of tinkering, but it's not too difficult. So if I was to come through here and we can see that we're setting art zero and art one because we need to number them if we're going to be doing this. And it's going to be doing the same thing of the input, image suggestion, option query, and then art. I've left it as art there simply because of the fact that if you wanted to do this, zero use your default as the first one anyway. Zero. It's up to you if you want to change that. I've mainly done that because if people are going to start implementing it in this vault, in their own vault, sorry, then I want to make it straightforward as possible. So you'd have to go back and change everything. However, when we get to art one, we've got the exact same thing, but we're setting the property as art one, which is amazing. Now, what we can do from there is if we hide that and then come through in here, you'll see something very similar. As we've got it with this, with the MetaBind input, select option one, hag form, option two, human form. So that's the names of the tabs that we've got ourselves. And then coming down a bit more below, you can see that we now have the selections like we did with the actually typing it in manually, but now we're using the view properties from MetaBind. We're doing the view, art, text, random markdown, and then the view, art, text, random markdown. And they've got obviously art and art one respectively. And then what that'll do essentially is swap between the two ones that we've seen. So going from the hack form to the human form. And you could do this for multiple, multiple different images and whichever one's your preference. And it's really that simple guys. Go ahead and start using this to start expanding your vaults and making them more detailed with a lot more images that you want to showcase in the info box. That simple. So for those that stuck around and still don't know what exactly this is, we're using a program called Obsidian, which is a note taking tool which you can get for free, which is already an amazing program that allows you to take notes, link your notes together, just do all amazing things. Like I said before, I've got a video on Obsidian itself and the basics if you want to check that out. But what we're doing here is more on the side of our templates. So being able to spend less time actually having to worry about making every single note from scratch. And I give you guys essentially a list, a vault is what we call them, of different templates that we can use. So for example, we have service templates, quest templates, adventure templates. We have various rumors. We have NPCs, organizations, players. We have party dashboard deities. We have different locations, such as your point of interests, districts, settlements, areas, country, and the list goes on, obviously. And then we're constantly expanding on it every month and making changes and improvements. There's a lot here to get your hands on. And again, it saves you having to mess around with either having loads of different pieces of scrap paper with all these different notes on or having your notes essentially being held hostage by these companies that ask you to pay monthly for their services. And if you don't keep paying them, then you lose all of your notes altogether. This is a really good different way to go about it where you have essentially free access to all your notes forever and you don't need to pay anyone. Now, that's not to forget that the templates from me, you do have to sign up for. However, that's more so to support me in the work that I've done, but 
beyond the first month payment, you can just cancel that completely and have the templates and not need to worry about it afterwards. And again, Obsidian is completely free, so no one's holding your notes hostage. So just one thing to bear in mind. But no, I highly recommend looking into this. Obsidian, either my templates or just from your own point of view, because it's an amazing, amazing program. And I couldn't go back to OneNote Word or any of these other online services. It's just changed my life. But that is everything from me, folks. Hopefully you've learned something here today or if I just piqued your interest, then that's great as well. If you're interested in finding out more, I recommend checking out some of the videos that are probably on screen now. And hopefully I should see you in the next one. Until then, guys, I'll see you around. Subscribe if you haven't already and keep track because I've got a lot of posts coming. Adios.